Good morning uh, to everyone and thank you for joining uh, today's uh, webinar and uh, our topic today is the follow-up of yesterday's topic uh, uh, where we're going to be uh, talking about uh, open education resources uh, and uh, uh, our objective for today's session we're going to be talking about open education we are and the five R's of open. We're going to be distinguishing and differentiating between OER, open textbook, open courses, and MOOCs. And of course, we're going to try to have a clear understanding of uh, what are the potential of OER in the education in general and in society in uh, particular. And of course, we'll uh, just uh, we'll have some hands on on how to find, evaluate, adopt, and adopt OER, and we will look at different uh, platforms. So uh, let me, uh, before I, uh, I start with uh, uh, some definition about open education, uh, in uh, uh, yesterday's session, if you remember, we just uh, 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 defined, you know, like uh, the open license, and uh, we talk about uh, uh, what is an open license. So we discuss together the four conditions of an open license or a creative common license. And then we uh, explored the six different type of licenses uh, of creative commons. And, uh, the, you know, we, we, uh, we talked about the attribution and with some example, we, we discussed the remixing of licenses and stuff like that. So today, talking about uh, uh, openness and open education, our second topic, let us first define what's open education. And when we say open education, uh, people have different definition, they have different uh, understanding about open education, but the generally speaking, you know, when we say open education, it's not just OER, it is a philosophy, you know, about, you know, how we uh, produce content, how we produce material, how we share whatever we produce, and how, you know, people build on uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, in a society. And when we say open education, we're talking about different resources, we're talking about tools, practices, okay? So uh, all those tools and practices and resources, which, you know, under openness can be shared with the community. And of course, you know, why, you know, like uh, 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 we can scale uh, the concept of open education uh, because we have the internet, we have the digital uh, resources uh, available for us, okay? So whenever we talk about open education in general, we're going to make use of the internet. As we have seen yesterday in uh, yesterday's webinar, we said something that uh, uh, the internet enabled us, okay? Connecting people all over the world. So if I want to look at the open education, uh, a definition uh, in a very important framework. It's called the Open EDU framework. And uh, 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 this framework, you know, there is a link at the bottom of the slide. You know, whenever, you know, I share my slide with you, you can click on it and you can, it's uh, maybe 70, 80 pages uh, 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 document, which is very important for you. But I will cover uh, uh, quickly what's in this uh, framework, okay? And the, the, the main objective of this framework is to widen access and participation and removing barriers and making the learning accessible, uh, making a material customizable, okay? And of course, it offers multiple ways of teaching and learning, building and sharing knowledge. And also, it provides access routes to formal and non-formal education and connects the two together. This is what's known as the open education or open edu framework. And the framework is uh, based on 10 dimensions. Here they talk about 10 dimensions, as, as you see in this uh, uh, picture here. And uh, the, the 10 dimensions, you know, we're going to define them quickly. We're talking about uh, content. We're talking about pedagogy. We're talking about recognition, collaboration, research, and access. It's not, so when we say open education, it's not just OER. When we say open education, it's not open textbook. When we say open education, it's not just one thing. It is a, a, a as I said before, it's a 
a, a, a concept, you know, it's just when you say, well, an institution adopting open education, it means there is a change in the mindset at all levels in the institution. And of course, you know, the four other dimension are uh, technology, the quality of uh, content and material and research paper or whatever. The leadership is a component and of course the strategy. Let me just uh, quickly uh, go through those dimensions and give some examples. So if we take the first dimension, uh, they talk in this framework about you know access. And when we say access, it means widening participation, opening access to education, okay? It means what? When we talk about access, it means we're removing and lowering economic, technological, geographical, and institutional barriers that may obstruct the doorway to uh, knowledge. This is uh, one important point. When, it, when, when they talk about the content, they talk about open educational resources. And open educational resources, we have defined it uh, Yesterday, you know, following the UNESCO official uh, 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 definition of OER, which was, as I said yesterday, adopted by 193 uh, uh, countries, you know, they have adopted this uh, uh, definition. And then the third component of our third dimension, they talk about pedagogy, because, you know, when we say ped pedagogy or open pedagogy or open educational uh, practices, and here we're talking an approach, you know, like, you know, you see a lot of people now worldwide are talking about open pedagogy. What mean, what does it mean, you know, say open pedagogy? Open pedagogy, for example, when, uh, if I am teaching a course or um, uh, 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 as an instructor, you know, uh, uh, and I follow uh, the open education practice or open pedag pedagogy, I can make my students uh, 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 part of this uh, uh, teaching learning, you know, I make, I, I help my students to create content, uh, to share in creating content, uh, the way I assign the homework and stuff like that, so that it's not me, the teacher only, who is uh, a one-way communication teaching I, because I have the information. No, I involve my student uh, uh, to be part of this uh, learning teaching process. And this is what they, you know, what it means to say often pedagogy or open educational uh, practices. Uh, another dimension is the recognition. Uh, and this is also is very important. And a lot of people, especially in Europe now, thinking about uh, transitioning and uh, finding ways and finding frameworks and then talking about quality, about how we can transition. And maybe this is something very important for your project, the race project and the research you're doing in this uh, project about uh, displaced people, refugees, how we can uh, uh, recognize, you know, like, for example, if uh, uh, those people uh, attended a MOOC course, or if they uh, took, you know, a, a course, you know, on their own, or uh, uh, they followed, uh, let's say, one or two or three lifelong courses or whatever. So uh, the, the recognition is, uh, uh, it means what? It means how we can make uh, the transition from non-formal to formal, uh, uh, education, okay? Uh, so this is uh, uh, another dimension which they refer to it as open learning because a lot of people now believe the learning can happen everywhere. It doesn't to have to happen in brick and mortar at the university. Students learn everywhere. Uh, so this is, we, we refer to it as non-formal learning. And unfortunately, when we talk about non-formal learning, at, at universities, we have grades, we have exams, we have, okay, we try to capture if and understand if students have learned uh, the material, that's all no. But, you know, uh, uh, the, the informal or non-formal, a lot of learning is happening outside. And that's why, you know, you see people talking about badges, open badges, uh, you know, to uh, give to the student and they've been recognized by institution and by employers and stuff like that. And the, the, another dimension is the collaboration dimension. Okay, and here when we say collaboration uh, um, in open education, here we, we're talking about exchanging, collaborating. You know, you're working on a project. Somebody else in the EU is working on the same uh, different project. How we can collaborate with, with uh, you know, between different stakeholders at the university level. Uh, I am teaching a course, you know, using open pedagogy. I can share, collaborate with other uh, 
uh, a faculty member who are teaching uh, at my university and transfer the knowledge uh, uh, for them in order to improve the teaching learning uh, that we are performing. And of course, the another one is the research uh, dimension. And here we're talking about open science, open data, open access, okay? So also when we say open research, it means we're removing the barriers, you know, so people can access the data. Uh, and uh, the research, you know, whatever there is a research, the output of this research, and this is, will help in disseminating the knowledge, in building on the knowledge, it helps with the transparency and stuff like that. So this, those are the uh, sixth of the uh, dimension. Moreover, we have another dimension, it's called the strategy. And here, when we say strategy, it means uh, uh, how we integrate, you know, those, this open education uh, into our uh, institution, whether it is a university or it's a school or whatever. And for example, at my institution, why, when I introduce the concept of openness and OER at the university, okay, I'm, I'm doing a lot of training, a lot of awareness campaign, a lot of capacity building, but that's not enough. What I have done is after, you know, like, maybe the second year. Now we have uh, uh, the OER thing, the open education thing. It is built within our uh, strategic plan or the strategic plan of the uh, uh, university. It means what? It means that, you know, now it is institutionalized. You know, it's not just with, the, uh, with me uh, uh, talking about OER, talking about openness. It should be institutionalized. And this is what they refer to it as uh, 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 including uh, all those activities within the strategy of the institution. Uh, then, of course, uh, another dimension, which is the, uh, also important, which is uh, 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 the technology dimension. And here we talk about free and open source software, open document standard. For example, uh, the, the, uh, the Moodle platform, it's a, it's, a, it's a tool, it's a platform that, you know, uh, uh, an open platform. When we talk about open document standard, it means, you know, like uh, saving uh, a file in a PDF document and sharing the file. It's not open because, you know, if somebody wants to take this PDF file, it's not an, under an open standard. And this is also uh, something that uh, uh, people have to think about. Whenever they want to save a file or save a document, it should be saved under uh, a, a, an open standard so that if somebody else take the file or the document, they can do whatever they want to do, of course, if it has an open license. And another dimension is the quality. And here we're talking about quality, object, uh, we're talking about objective standard uh, 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 procedure. And when we talk about quality, because this is one hot topic when, we come, when it comes to OER and open education, well, how do we know that this uh, resource or this book or this uh, whatever, you know, on the internet, it is of high quality. That's why a lot of institutions now are designing templates uh, with questions so that faculty members can follow uh, those uh, uh, standards so that they can uh, find OER and evaluate uh, 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 the uh, open education uh, resources, okay? Whether it is a uh, one resource, whether it is a complete course, whether it is a document, whether it is an image or a video. So that should be kind of uh, uh, quality assurance standards, you know. And there are a lot of uh, uh, material uh, and a lot of standards now uh, that help us as educator or researcher uh, uh, to evaluate that this resource is of uh, quality. And the last one is they talk about uh, leadership. And here, uh, there are two approaches. It's a bottom-up approach, the approach that I have used myself, you know, from my experience, how I approach, you know, by uh, preaching about open education, bottom-up approach. But also, I had the support of my president and my dean or the deans of the university, because both of them are uh, important if you want to promote open education in your uh, institution. So those are, it's a very important uh, document, you know, I advise you just to go to the link and later on and go into uh, uh, the details of each one of those. Anyway, talking about open education terms in general, as we said, we talk about open access, open data, open courseware, open educational resources, open textbook. The thing that I want you to know is that uh, uh, all those uh, terminology that we, when we say open 
uh, terms, open access, open data, open textbook, they are freely accessible and they are openly licensed. Free, it means no cost. People don't have to pay money for it. And openly licensed, you know, this is what we defined yesterday was an open license. And I will talk more about, you know, uh, the open license and the permission uh, later on in the presentation. Some other definition before we uh, move on is the open access also. This is the definition from the Spark. And there is a link down there in the presentation that you can click on it and it will take you to the detail of open access. Also, when we say open access, we're talking about free, immediate online availability of research articles with the right to couple to use these articles fully in the digital uh, environment. Okay. And this, when we say open access, we're ensuring that anybody can access and use uh, the results okay, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, research. Open data, also there is a term which is called open data. And, you know, when we say open data, a lot of governments, you know, uh, websites, you know, like UNESCO, uh, like the World Bank, uh, uh, US government in Europe, there is, you know, a section where you go to their website and see that there is uh, open data available, which are free. Uh, and you can download them, copy them, analyze them, you know, write papers about them, uh, so forth and uh, so forth. Open coursework. Now, when we say open coursework and the open coursework initiative, also, we're talking here about a free and open uh, 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 publication of high quality uh, courses, university level courses, or it can be K to 12 uh, courses, which are uh, openly available for free. And a good example that everybody knows, uh, and the, they were the leader and the champion in uh, uh, what we call open courseware is the MIT, MIT Open Courseware uh, uh, Initiative. And uh, the MIT back in 2001, the president of the, the university, of course, after uh, talking to all the faculty member and sending surveys, decided to uh, uh, post all the MIT courses you know, one of the most prestigious university worldwide to put their material, their courses completely online. And this MIT uh, uh, initiative that started in 2001, okay, and now so many other universities worldwide in Europe and in the state, they have their all their courses which are openly licensed and accessible for anybody uh, uh, to access those courses. And it means what? For example, now I cannot go to MIT, but now if I'm teaching a course at Notre Dame University here in Lebanon, what I can do is I can go to MIT, I can find the course, I can download all the material, the syllabus, the PowerPoint presentation, reading material, assignment, everything about a specific course, and I can freely uh, 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 customize uh, the material, I can adopt, adapt the material to my context, I can translate it to Arabic if I want, I can translate it to French if I want, and it's all free and open. When we say open courseware, the only thing that you don't have access to uh, uh, is the instructor. I mean, you, you take the material, okay, from MIT, but you don't have access, of course, to the instructor. What, what <clears throat> MIT have done lately, and this is something, a new model, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, established what they call the uh, micro, micro learning uh, uh, courses, that, for example, you know, if you take uh, in a MOOC format, and we'll talk about MOOC later on. For example, if you want to uh, 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 register in one of those uh, micro uh, uh, certificate uh, uh, courses, for example, it consists of five courses, all right? Uh, you can take them for free. Uh, uh, the instructor or the professor of MIT uh, are the facilitator of those uh, uh, courses. Uh, at the end, if you decide that you want it, uh, to take a certificate from MIT, you just pay money for each one of those courses. And the good thing about this now, and this is what I'm trying to say about uh, uh, the transitioning between informal to formal learning, what they have done too, if you take those courses and you, uh, uh, you pass those, uh, the, 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 the courses uh, in a particular certificate, what you can do, you can and you decide to apply for a master's degree at MIT, let's say, you can, uh, they will count those courses as part of your master program. So they have linked the non-formal 
if you if you want to say it this way, to the formal education system, something that we just uh, discussed. Another term that we hear about is open textbook. And as the name implies, when we talk about open textbook, we're talking about a textbook, a complete textbook, which was released with an open license. And of course, uh, the, the, the faculty member or teacher can take the book, they can download it, they can copy it, they can uh, remix it, they can change anything depending on the license. This is what it's known about uh, open textbook. Uh, uh, another term that before we uh, start with our uh, uh, different databases and uh, look at uh, into more details about uh, all those concepts, you know, the MOOC thing, you know, uh, MOOC stands for Massive Open Online uh, Course. And when we say uh, MOOC, the M is massive and it means, you know, you can have 100, you can have 10,000 uh, students enrolled in one single course. Uh, open means uh, 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 open content, uh, free of charge, uh, affordable, uh, open registration. Uh, the O in online, it's uh, uh, real-time interaction. It can be, it can be synchronous, asynchronous, all those kind. And of course, the C, self-paid, uh, start date and date. You know, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, do whatever uh, with the MOOC. One thing about MOOCs in general, and this is what people don't know. Uh, MOOC, some people refer to MOOC as OER. Uh, most of the MOOCs, uh, they're not, uh, uh, they are free for you, but they're not open. It means what? Uh, very few MOOCs that you find, uh, they are free and open, and hence we can call them open education uh, resource. You know, uh, we said before that if you wanna consider that a uh, to uh, a course or a resource to be uh, 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 an OER, it should be free and open. The MOOC are free, but the MOOC are not open. Open, it means you cannot uh, uh, customize, you cannot change, you cannot localize. There are a few MOOCs that you find uh, worldwide that they are free and open, but most of the MOOCs from top university, edX, Coursera, stuff like that, they are free, but they are not open. This is something I wanted you uh, 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 to understand. Now, after we finish definition, my area or my concentration today in today's presentation is going to be about open education uh, resources. And when we say OER, I'm going to go back to the uh, definition of OER, the UNESCO definition. And here we're talking about learning, teaching, research material in any format and medium which reside in the public domain or under a copyright that has been released under an open license that permits no cost. So we have open license with no cost. And the reason you know, for this is we can reuse, repurpose, adapt, redistribute all the things that we know. If you look again at this picture that we talked about yesterday, we have the resources. We have plus uh, uh, a Creative Commons license makes it an OER. So when we define open, and this is something very important for you today to understand, when we say open and uh, uh, we're talking about a free resource, fine, no dollar, no cost, fine. But we have to understand something that David Wiley, one of the godfathers of the open movement, he talked about the permissions and what he mean by permission. He's saying that, you know, we need to attend this resource, okay, to be open, to be considered open. It, okay, that's fine, it's free, but it has to have certain kind of permission. And David Wiley talked about five different type of uh, uh, R's. He called them the five R. They are known about the five R activities that he believes and the community, open community believes that if a resource that we want to use uh, uh, to be open, a truly open resource, it has to have the five R attached to it. And what he means by the five R, the first R he talked about, it's, as you see in the picture, is retain, second one, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So what David uh, is saying is, first of all, first of all, if you find a resource on the internet, it means you, as a user, should have the right to retain and yani, make a copy, download the resource, yani, and to, to hold this resource, to have a copy of it, to store it, whatever. Yani, the first R he discussed is the retain. Okay, the second R 
he talked about the reuse of the resource. Your right to use the content in a wide range of uh, format. You can use it in your classroom. You can use it, uh, you know, uh, on a website. You can use it in a video presentation, whatever. So this is he called it the reuse. And the third one is revise. You're right. Whenever you have the resource, you, uh, uh, you downloaded the resource, you have the right to uh, change something in the resource. You know, as we've seen yesterday, you take a picture, download the picture, you change the color, uh, maybe uh, you justify it, you add it, you modify, you alter the content, do whatever, you know, this is what he called revise. And of course, another R is the remixing of the R of the remix. It means I, I found two resources, and uh, I want to combine those two resources together, and I should be able to do it. And the last one is, okay, I have a new resource now. I should have the right to send or share the resource uh, uh, with, uh, on the internet, with others, with my students, with my colleagues, whatever. So uh, uh, the, the, the open, the open uh, the, according to Wiley, and a lot of uh, people now are adopting those, it's what we call the five R activities, retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. And those five are make what we call an OER a resource. And that's why yesterday, if you notice, we discussed the, uh, for example, one of the licenses, which is has a, a, a equal sign, which is no derivative. And uh, in the international community, open community, they consider that this resource is not an open resource. Okay, it is a resource. It, it has an open license, but it's not classified as and open resource. Why? Because one of the R that you see in this uh, 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 template here is the revise. You know, I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot change anything in this resource. I can use it fine. I can download it fine. I cannot take this resource and mix it with another resource. So that's why today, you know. We understand why you know they consider a resource with equal sign, no derivative, is not an OER or it's not an open uh, resource. Uh, let me pause here before I move. Do you have any questions before I move on? Is it clear the five R and how it is attached to the uh, uh, per the, the permission? Mm. All right. Yes. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes. No, it, it is quite clear all what you said, but I have a doubt about the definition of MOOCs. You said, uh, yes, you said that MOOCs uh, are not by definition open, right? Right. The main difference between an OER and the MOOC is that the MOOC is not open, right? Right, that's true. But, but, it, but if I publish uh, some resources, for instance, with uh, an ND license, it means that I cannot modify it, right? If you if you say it, and yes, of course, it, you can. You, it is a, an open resource, but it's not. You cannot modify it. You cannot do anything with it. Okay, or, so it's it's very close to a MOOC. An OER with an ND is very close to a MOOC. Is that right? Yeah. The the, the, the what I'm trying to say now, if you take uh, if you go to edX or Coursera or whatever, you know, it's you know this those MOOCs or those courses are free. You can register, you have any time, you can follow at your own pace, but you cannot take uh, the content of those MOOCs that you find. I'm saying in general, 90% of the MOOCs you find worldwide are not, uh, are not classified as OER. They are free, but they're not open. It might be that you find, for example, in your situation, if you put on your, let's say, website and you publish a MOOC, for example, as part of this raised project, and you say, well, uh, whatever content, whatever material in this uh, uh, MOOC that you develop uh, under the RAID project, you're going to say explicitly and attach a license, which is an open license, uh, for example, open uh, uh, CC by uh, uh, alone, or it can be CC by share alike, or it can be CC by no commercial. Okay, it's open. All those licenses are fine, and if you attach those to your uh, website or your MOOC, then it is your MOOC is considered to be an OER because it is free and it is open at the uh, same time. I'm going to admit. Okay, so this is the story. All right. Uh, is it clear, uh, Raniero? No? 
Sorry, I was muted. Yes, yes, it's clear. Thank you. Oh, very good. Uh, uh, great. Uh, next, what does uh, 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 this is what does uh, open mean? If you want to say what's not OER, and this is here, for example, we need to understand uh, this uh, slide. And if you look at this slide here, first of all, if you look at this one, let me minimize my screen. Okay, the fully copyrighted resources, the C, of course, those are, uh, are not considered uh, uh, OER. The second one, subscription-based resources. And what does this mean? You know, like uh, uh, at the university, if we take an example, at my university, we have a lot of uh, subscription uh, for online journals and materials and stuff like that, which, you know, the university is paying uh, 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 money uh, for those so that, you know, if you are a student at our university, then you have the right to access those resources. But it doesn't mean that if you have the right to access those resources, which were paid by the university, for example, it means you have the right to uh, 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 download, uh, revise, remix, and stuff like that. You have only access uh, for those subscription-based resources in general, and those resources are not classified as OER. Also, the open access resources, you know, okay, open access, it means, you know, some lot of people are publishing an open access journal, and we're talking about research-based uh, publication, uh, academic journals uh, uh, that are accessible to the public. You know, you can access it for free. You don't have to be registered uh, uh, in my university to access those online journals. Okay, we, and we're seeing a lot of open access journals nowadays. But however, uh, uh, whenever you access those resources, you don't see a license that, you know, it allows you to uh, uh, adopt, adopt, remix, or build on whatever uh, uh, you see in those articles or whatever research is published. So, yeah, the, the, the idea here is that it doesn't mean that if it is an open access uh, uh, website or open access journal, it means that this is, is classified as OER. It is not. It is free, but it's not open. This is what I'm trying to emphasize here. It should be, as I said, an OER should have the free thing and it, shall, it has to have the open and the open according to the permission of the 5R of David Wiley should be uh, there. And this is here another uh, uh, example in a text format, you know, subscription based, uh, all those things, that's fine. Some example of OER, when we say OER, we can talk about all different types of example, from a syllabus to lecture notes, for full courses, they can cl are classified as you are books, textbook, images, homework, audio, video, research data, scientific paper, all are examples of open educational resources on the condition that those resources, whether a syllabus or a full course, they should have a license that are, first they are free and they should have an open license attached to them. So this is in general some of the definition. In the, in the next part of our presentation today, I will explore with you a couple of, uh, uh, you know, websites to uh, just uh, show you some example about a uh, 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 different type of uh, uh, what's there, where to look uh, for OER uh, 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 in general. Uh, any question before we move to the, some examples? Do I have any question? All right. Uh, first of all, yesterday we, I, I gave you an example about Google Advanced Search and uh, I, you know, we, we, we discussed, you know, like how you can using the Google Advanced Search to find open educational resources according to uh, usage drive, according to uh, the license that you, you want, uh, you're looking for this resource. I'm not going to go through this because we've done it yesterday. I said, for example, Flickr is part of this movement. If you're looking for a picture on Flickr, you can find they have millions of pictures. But of course, whenever you try to find a picture, you can in your, if you see on the screen here, there is something called any license, or you can specify that I want to a CC by license, just give me the result of a Creative Commons license. Anything you have with a Creative Commons license, or again, this is something that, let me start with, 
some uh, important, you know, uh, uh, search engine. For example, the, this is the Mason OER Meta Finder, and this is a an engine that I want to share with you. Uh, and the important of this uh, uh, OER Meta Finder. Uh, uh, Whenever you, you try to find a search, let me just go to the OER Meta Finder thing. Oops. I think. It, uh, it is blocked here by, uh, by the firewall of the university. Let me try again. Here we go. All right. So the Mason OER Meta Finder, the, the important uh, thing about this uh, search engine here that uh, was developed by at Mason University is that it, it will look for whatever you're trying to find, whatever criteria you put here, it will try to find it in about the 21 uh, databases where there are OER. And this is the list of the databases that whenever you type, you type your uh, search uh, item here, it will look in all those and it will look uh, in real time. And for example, if, uh, if you say, for example, I'm looking for uh, biology by author, date range, whatever, let's say biology, and uh, you just uh, uh, put the search thing, okay, it, it will find for you or, you know, uh, uh, resources that will return for you resources from different sources, from different uh, databases, okay? For example, here from the Digital Library of America, this is uh, a book from OpenStax, this is, uh, this is uh, 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 a, a document, PDF document from uh, the JSTOR Open Access book, this is from Merlot. You see, it's trying to find for you uh, whatever your search item is. And of course you have the filters here on the left side. Maybe you're looking for molecular, molecular biology and then you can filter uh, your uh, search. If, if we go to one of those, let's say, if we go to one of those uh, 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 items, okay. For example, here, this is MIT. Let's take an example at, and then we can see MIT. It took me, for example, biology, and this is why I was trying to say about MIT Open Coursework. This is a course in biology, molecular biology from MIT Open Coursework. And you see here, this is the home page of the course. Okay. The syllabus of the course, remember we said uh, open coursework, it means the complete course with the syllabus, with the material, anything, you know, it's here. The calendar. Uh, the uh, the reading assignment of the course uh, you have the uh, all the assignment writing assignment if you click on it was the material writing assignment was the material this is exactly the syllabus of this course the way as it is taught at mit uh, you have the exam part here exam one two and three also available the, some study material which are here and then here they have what to call download a course. You know, you can download the complete package of the course and use it in your institution, okay? Of course, all you have to do is just give the proper attribution for MIT, something that we have discussed before, okay? So this is an example of, uh, 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 let me go back, to the Mason OER Meta Finder. Another important uh, 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 digital repository for ER, and this is an international uh, 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 repository, and it's very important for you to just go to the OER Commons, and we're going to see what's in OER Commons. And this is something, you know, maybe uh, 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 is an important thing for your project too. Let's talk about the OER Commons. OER Commons, you know, it's a place where you can look it's a digital library of what we call open educational resources where you can explore try to find resources that's fine but also what they have they have uh, 
made for us uh, the tools, all the tools, if you want to create an OER. And you want to create an OER and you want to share this OER. You want to publish your OER. We're, we're going to see an example. Well, here you can type what you're looking for and what, what is the subject you're of interest, which education level, high school, adult learning, uh, continuing education, technical, whatever. And here they have a couple of standards according to uh, uh, the United States, you know, different uh, uh, like uh, uh, Illinois or in California, they have different standards. I'm looking for this resource and I want this resource. Please return back all the resources according to a specific standard, depending on which state you are in. And of course here, if you type your search, it will, for example, you're looking for open educational uh, resources, let's say, this is my search. And I'm gonna say search, and let's see what uh, the results are. On the left side here, you can filter again, you know, up or, you know, it depends on what you wanna filter your results. Uh, 730 results that I have, and the, the results are here. It will give you the title of the resource, down here, you see some ratings, one, two, three, four ratings. Who did this rating? Who, wh where is this rating coming from? What they have done is, remember we, we talk about uh, the quality thing, about uh, uh, that people are saying, well, we're finding so many stuff on the internet, but we don't know if this OER or this resource is of quality. What they have done under, you know, the OER common that, you know, like, for example, if I take this resource, I look at the resource, there is a place for me as an educator or as a person to evaluate this resource and give it according to different criteria. Uh, we will see how, but this is the subject. This is the metadata of the resource. Uh, it's provided by the Open University Open Learn and date added. And on the left side here, I can see what type of open license is attached to this resource? You're gonna say, well, this is a, a resource, but it doesn't, uh, uh, I don't wanna this resource, but this one, it is a, it has a non-commercial thing. And me, I want to find a resource that maybe I wanna make money out of it. So what you can do is you can uh, filter uh, those resources by, as I said, education standard, by subject area, by education level, by material type, for example, if you're looking for assessment, you're looking for case study, you're looking for full course, you're looking for a game, you're looking for an interactive activity, you can filter those resources according to whatever material type you're looking for. And moreover, what you can do is you can filter according to license type, okay? A conditional remix and share permitted, for example, uh, I'm going to say CC by, I want this one. So now what I've done, I filtered the resources from the 730. I have now those resources about open education resources where they have the CC by share alike license. If you look at all those uh, resources. So if, if, we, if we go to one of those resources, I click, you see this one, it doesn't have any rating. Yeah, and maybe people downloaded it, but nobody have rated this resource, no rating yet on it, because it will give you an idea here about the rating of uh, each one of those uh, uh, resources. For example, if I go to this one, let's say this resource, I click on it, it gives me a description of the resource, it tells me what license is attached to this resource, and I can click here and I say the view resource, Okay, or let me go first to the view, view the resource. Now I can view it, and this is the resource. I can download it, do whatever. But the important thing about the, the Creative Commons, for example, uh, this is one resource that you find, and you find another resource, and you wanna create or remix the two together. Also, on the Creative Commons, you have all the tools here to download, to share, okay, or to remix this resource with another resource already have. If you, if you click on remixing here, 
if I click on remix here, okay, it will take me to the what they call the open author. They have a, like a like a, the MS Word, for example. It it took this resource and put it in a place that you know I can hear. I can change anything I want with it. I can add uh, uh, a new unit to this whatever I, I I broke or I found as an open resource. Okay. I can uh, invite somebody to author down here. There is this co-author. You can invite somebody uh, to author this resource with you. Uh, you can uh, uh, import uh, maybe a file that you have on OneDrive or under Google Docs and uh, plug it here. And then it has this open author thing. It has all uh, uh, like MS Word, for example. You can take this one, say, well, I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it italic and I'll make it underline, okay? So you have the everything you want to do. What happens is this is something that you are modifying. What I'm trying to say is OER Commons is giving us all the tools to work with open educational resources. You start working with the research, you can create the whole, a whole book here. You can add unit, you can add headings, whatever you want to add and save it and then once you are ready and your resource is ready, you decide how you want to share it. If you see the three things, right? Describe, you describe your resource, you give it the meta, metadata, give it... Remember when uh, we were talking about, you know, maybe you took uh, one, two resources, you add something to it and, you know, you can add a new abstract to this resource because it's a new resource. Uh, uh, you can put all the metadata here, language, maybe you want to do it in Arabic or you have translated whatever, something for uh, displaced people about, you know, learning uh, Arabic, okay, uh, or uh, how to spell words, I don't know. So you put all the metadata, we call this the metadata, and this is important, why was the keyword? Because in order that people will find your resource in the future, you need to put some keywords, some metadata, which you attach with the resource. And later on, when you've done, you just put submit here. And when you put submit, sorry, when you put submit here, it will ask you uh, the following question. What type of license you want to attach to this resource? Because now here we're talking about maybe uh, you took a resource, you modified the resource, you remake the resource, now you want to attach a license to this new resource. Now you know which license to attach and which license you're not allowed because from last session or yesterday's session, you know what to remix, what type of license, uh, for example. Let's say, if, if I want to just to review a little bit, if this resource which I brought or I found, it had a license which says uh, uh, CC by non-commercial share alike. If there is this share alike, it means here I cannot modify. I have to say allow commercial use. I cannot say yes. I have to say no because I have to abide by the license of the resource which I have mixed. Anyway, so you just put here whatever you want. Allow modification, yes or no, as long as others share. And then once you click on publish here, Okay, your resource will be uh, published. It will be published on the OER Commons, and people, whenever they try to find uh, 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 a resource, you know, or this, whatever this resource is, they can find it. And of course, you can modify, you can add, you can do whatever. So the OER Commons, I'll, I'm gonna say, it's a very important website for you to look at. Okay, and you find, you can find a lot of materials, you know, like for this project or other project that, you know, you can uh, use and share. Uh, the OER Commons, uh, I mean, we don't have time because it, it's a huge website. Uh, uh, it needs some time if you want to uh, train somebody how to use it, uh, how to author, you know, how to, to create a new content, but it's not difficult. But uh, of course, the, the, the people need some training. Another, this is the first thing about the discover thing in OER Commons. They have a very important uh, uh, thing which they call it the hubs. And you know, you can be part of your hub. For example, uh, 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 in Europe, there are so many universities are working on 
material and content, and they want to find a common place to put all this material and share and collaborate, they can create a hub on OER Common, and people can join this hub. Okay, and the hub, it, it can have an administrator, and if you want to join the hub, for example, you have to be approved by the administrator. And for example here, I'm going to see my hubs, what, what are the hubs? This is me, you see my picture here. I am part of the Alexo OER hub, uh, the Arab countries. If you click on it here, I am part of this hub. And if I click on it, and I see here that this is a hub for the all the Arab states here. We have 22 member states, which are part of this creator, uh, 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 OER common uh, 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 website. So, if I, if I go, for example, to Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I can see here, I can see here what content those people uh, are, uh, are putting on the OER Commons. For example, they have some material here in Arabic, okay? Uh, for example, this is a book for the people with disability. I can go to it, all right? It is on the uh, OER Commons. I look at the description. This is something nice. I'm, you know, I want to use it in uh, uh, with. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I need it uh, in Arabic for people who are displaced or people who are were poor because I have some people who have disability and we need for them material uh, in Arabic. And where do I find it? It's already. If, if if you find it here, maybe you just look at the resource. And I can read here the the license. It's an open license, CC BY. It's non-commercial, share alike, that's fine. Let me go to the resource to see what's in this resource. I will go to the resource. It will redirect you to the, where the resource is. Okay, and this is, uh, this is the resource in Arabic. I will look at it. I can download it here, the PDF document, so on and so forth. All right, so this is, this is uh, uh, the resource. If you see here, I can I can also save this resource to my items. You know, once. Uh, ah, by the way, when you go to the OR Commons, please the the first thing you should do is create a, a username and password so that you will, whenever you save something, you remix something, you are working with documents or uh, contents or resources, then it will you have a, a space for you. All right. Uh, another important hub available uh, here. There are so many hubs, but you know, I want to point out uh, UNESCO is part of this uh, uh, OER common, and they have a created a hub which they call it the UNESCO ICT Competency Framework for Teacher, and this is a very important framework which dev was developed by UNESCO throughout the years. Okay, which has uh, different uh, items in it. UNESCO ICT CFT and OER in action, aligned resources adopter. If you go to this, <clears throat> you, uh, to the ICT CFT hub of UNESCO, you have, you can see the, the framework that they have, very important framework in French. They have the framework also in Arabic. If I click on this one here, I can see the framework in Arabic. If I can cl click here, I have the framework in here. And this is their framework. What they have done is, they have uh, uh, created a framework about, for example, understanding ICT and education, okay? Uh, curriculum and assessment, pedagogy, application of digital skills, organization and administration, teacher professional learning. And here they move from, at each one of those items, they move from knowledge acquisition to knowledge deepening to knowledge creation. But the most important thing is that if you go to each one, for example, you're looking for, let's say, resources which, you know, these with curriculum and assessment, okay, and I want it to be at the basic level, knowledge acquisition, you go here, you find that there are 13 resources which are open uh, resources which are shared by people. Let's see uh, about curriculum and assessment. If you go here to check, you will find under this rubric, that you have different resources which are created by uh, uh, people or by government. For example, this is uh, coming from the Commonwealth of Learning, a resource, okay, which fall under this specific rubric. So uh, this is uh, briefly uh, the, uh, the uh, OER common. This is those are the hubs. 
you can create the groups, for example. For example, if I can create a group for my team, I can create a group for Lebanon, okay? And of course, if you want more services, you can contact the OER Commons, but everything here uh, is free and open uh, on OER Commons. I will stop here, take a one minute break and listen to your question if you have any question, but let me just turn uh, uh, my video. There is somebody. I might waiting. have a question. Uh, just one second. Please. Here, I'm gonna, here we go, yes. I'm listening. Um, so I was wondering if uh, yesterday you clearly explained that under creativecommons.org I license whatever resource I have. Let's say it's the mother platform and then I might have Google Advanced or other systems that grab the information from Creative Commons, which is the, the mother. Could I then compare creativecommons.org with uh, OER Commons? And then it's the MetaFinder uh, or and other systems that take the information from OER Commons. I mean, once that I upload, a new resource that has been before licensed and then I upload it on the OER Commons. Okay. Is that uh, the core action and then all other uh, internet no, systems no, no. take no, the no. information or the suggestion is upload it on OER Commons, upload okay. it on the MetaFinder, upload okay. it on several platforms I, to ensure it's... No, it is, uh, you, you, you have, uh, uh, I, I, I think I understand your uh, question. Let me just uh, try to answer you. This is one of the, you know, the OER thing and the open movement is something, you know, new. And now we are seeing more people and more people are joining this movement. And one of, uh, you know, and this is something evolving, something, you know, making it better. And this is one of the problems, you know, is where, and when you talk to faculty member, uh, they say, well, I don't know where to find OER. I don't know where to look for OER, okay? Uh, um, uh, uh, OER Commons, it is this institution which created this, uh, uh, all the tools and the licenses. And moreover, if you look at the Creative Commons license, uh, Creative Commons uh, website, it wasn't like this. So now what they're doing is they're doing some curation, yeah, yani curation, trying to find what's in so many databases on the internet, pictures, let's say. They look at Flickr, they look here and here and here, and they will evaluate the, 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 the resources and they say, well, this resource on our website is a a resource which has this specific license and they're giving us the tools. Okay, this is one thing. OER Commons, it's different here. It's another database. It's a big digital repository that now so many people, so many institutions, so many people working with the open movement are putting material and putting, creating uh, uh, resources and placing them uh, under OER Commons. It doesn't mean that the OER Commons is the only one. Now, as you will see in the example which comes, there is, for example, another important uh, uh, digital repository, which is called the Merlot, as if, you know, it is managed by somebody else. But, you know, at the end, uh, what people are working on, let me tell you, is uh, uh, trying to uh, use artificial intelligence with blockchain technology to follow the resource, how it start, where did it start, and how it moved on the internet. Uh, this is something, a lot of work is being done. For example, you have a resource, Louisa, and you have uploaded this resource, and you would like to see how your resource, which is open, how, where, is, where is it now? Who is using it? Okay, uh, are they giving you proper attribution, yes or no? And this is something, it's a hot, hot topic now that people are working on using a blockchain technology with open education resources to trace resources. But there are so many, you're right, there are so many uh, uh, databases, there are so many places you can find OER, 
Uh, that's why some of them are more specialized. For example, Creative Commons is specialized in one area. If you go to AR Commons, you know, it's specialized in a, a, a different area. If you go to, for example, as we're going to see OpenStax, if you want to find a complete book to replace your, your textbook at the university, uh, you go to OpenStax or you go to Sailor Academy. So there are different uh, data uh, digital repositories. Uh, 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 and of course, there are many and many and many. But, you know, at the end, you know, uh, we have a, a, a couple of good quality digital repository available. And this is what I'm trying to show here. Thank you. OK. Kifaya, you're OK? You have any question or we're doing fine? No question from my side. Uh, right. No question. Thank you, Mr. Fauzi. All it's right. OK. OK. Let's, let's move on. Uh, so this is the, well, actually, we covered the MIT Open Course for part of this one. Let me, let me just move on. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. CK12. Have you heard, Louisa, about CK12 website, for example? No. All no. right, C CK12, this is, you know, in my opinion, and I had the chance, you know, to visit them back in 2014 when I visited the United States. CK12, it's one of the, uh, I would say, most valuable website with content for CK, you know, for K-12 to uh, material. All the material on C uh, CK-12, uh, we're going to uh, take a look at it. It is open and it is free, very professional. And I will take some five minutes to show you CK-12. For example, in your situation, we're having problem where, where we're going to find material, where we're going to find activities, where we're going to find content for uh, the, you know, thousands and thousands of displaced people, you know, wh you know who's going to do all this content for them. For example, here, especially that we have kids, you know, who are uh, 10 years old, 15 years old, five years old, we need mathematic content. The problem is, for example, with, uh, with content in the Arab region, in our region, is the, uh, uh, the, the language. We don't have content, uh, enough content in Arabic. But there are a lot of good and quality content in English, let's say. Maybe there are, they're not for in Italian. Maybe you need something in Italian, in Spanish, in, uh, in the, uh, for the African suburbs. I don't know. So if we take a, if we, if we take a look at the CK-12, also at the CK-12, uh, if you want to, uh, you can, uh, OK, browse and stop. But if you want to use it really, uh, you can create an account also. It's free of charge. And let's take a look what you see on the uh, CK-12 uh, uh, website. This is because this is uh, my account. Let's say I want to look at uh, uh, for, uh, I'm looking for, uh, usually they are very professional with the uh, science, uh, 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 mathematics, physics, uh, biology, uh, all this uh, content. And they have all materials at all levels, you know from grade one to five, all the way to algebra. They have it by trigonometry, statistic, analysis, calculus. You know, they have science courses. Now they start working on some English courses. They have, you know, something also in social studies, economic, geography, stuff like that. But if we go to, for example, math by subject, I'm looking for content for grade one and five. And it will a beautiful website and high quality stuff. What you see, and the whole thing is based on a concept, you know, how to teach kids, you know, concept. For example, well, I'm looking for a, a content about the time, okay, uh, and uh, uh, time uh, conversion between words and number, let's say. And I'll give you a short example. They have all type of uh, videos. They have type uh, uh, a practice exercise. They have also curated content from the community that you can, uh, you know, which are added to the web website. But for example, you know, if, if we, uh, if you click on this uh, video here, 
you know, people can, this is one type of content, let's say, okay? And uh, what you can do is you can, whatever this activity you have here, you can assign it to a class if you are teaching a class, you know, automatically from here, it can be assigned to Google a classroom classes you can share it with your student if you have student because it can integrate with your uh, 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 whatever you are using. You can customize this activity. You can customize it. For example, what time is it now? I want this question in Arabic. Uh, you can customize this activity. Okay. Now it is yours. It gives you time. You know, you can change the title here. Writing times in number. I want to change it to Arabic. I want to add something to it. I want to modify it, okay? I want to write something like this. And now I have taken this activity that I found, it's mine now. Now, and it gives you the editor. You can add whatever you want to it. You can attach any resources. Again, this is something that you can adapt, not just adopt, you can. And they have all the tools in this website for you to adapt the content, to remix the content, to change it. And they have all different type here of uh, formatting uh, tools available. And once it's saved, you can change the image, for example, put a new image uh, uh, to this one. Uh, okay, whatever. So this is a, an example of what's in CK12. And the, the, guess what? Everything on this website is free and open. All you have to do is give attribution to the people. Let's take another example about, you know, by subject. I'm looking for a book now. If you look here, this is my library. This is what I tried to create now. Now it's in, into my library because I didn't write anything. Those are some books that I was working on. I can, one thing I want you to know about this website is that, you know, you don't, you can, as an instructor, as a researcher, you're, you're trying to create something using OER, you have all the tools to create, change, remix, and publish your material, design your uh, book without referring to no one. You don't need nobody. And once done, for example, I created uh, 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 this book, for example, let's say this one created by Fauzi, what you can do is yeah, okay, this is my book about interactive middle school math. Those are my section. Those, this is my equation, very professional. And all the material which available in my book, which I created, this is something coming from here, from the CK12, or something that, you know, I add myself, you know, I took a resource and I remixed the resource. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, and the books that they have, it's called the Flexbook. They are known as Flexbook. Uh, let me show you also what type of activities they have and simulation. You're looking, you're teaching, uh, for example, uh, you're teaching a, you're teaching a, 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 a let's say, um, about light and refraction, and you need a, an activity, people, a student, or you, the kids don't understand what you're talking about. So I'm, I'm going to show you what type of activities they have. For example, this is, you're, you're talking about uh, uh, refraction. Let's say this activity. This is an activity. What size mirror do you need to see your entire body? All those activities are customizable. You can put, you know, you can make it in Arabic if you want. You can make it in Italian if you want. Let's look at this simulation that they have here. Okay. Bazi, we have two questions. From yes. Lisa and from, uh, uh, I think it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at the chat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. You want to take the questions now or, or at the end? No, I, I would show this activity. Look at this activity. This is a student is looking at this, how the reflection happened, for example. And, okay, it shows, you know, how the, the, the picture, very professional. Now the student can change the length of the mirror and he can make the distance of the person and he can say the source of the ray are coming from the hand or the chest of the person. And then he play again and see now the, the ray, X-rays are coming. 
this activity, you know, it is an OER activity. Why? Because it is, you can find it on the CK12. It's free, it's open. Do whatever you want to do with it. Make it in Italian, make it in Arabic. You don't have to worry about this. So I will take some questions before I proceed. Uh, sorry, Mr. Fauzi, my question is, uh, what is the differences between the two websites, uh, the CK12 and the uh, OER uh, Commons? Uh, yes. It's, it's, as I said, you know, I was answering Luisa. This is uh, a, a, a website uh, dedicated uh, um, uh, for uh, K-12 material, content for K-12, okay? Uh, OER Commons, it's another digital repository. As if you're saying, you know, this is uh, uh, AUB University in Beirut, this is NDU University, and this is, there are so many websites, there are so many universities, there are many organizations that they have uh, uh, databases, digital repositories, which mm -hmm. they manage, which kind of, but this one, it's more focused on CK12 or uh, content for K-12 uh, 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 student. Uh, yes. Okay. And if you're looking for something for uh, uh, high school, uh, early Kaza, you can uh, go to CK-12. Just create an account or you can scan without creating an account. And yeah. uh, the thing is, this is uh, the way how this website started. Is the, the people, you know, have a lot of money and they wanted to do something good for the community, for the whole world. So they created this website with those materials and the best professor, they, they write the books, they write all of the material, they do think, and then they're putting them open and free for the whole world to make use of them. You know, CK12, a lot of places, you know, uh, in France, in Lebanon, you know, they're trying to uh, uh, translate the content and use the content. You know how much money and, you know, if you want to do such uh, activities and uh, yes. all, all kind of activities, all kind of concept. For example, elevator, if you, if you want to, uh, if, if, if the a kid, you know, why do you weigh less in a descending elevator for it? This is a concept. Why? How you're going to explain this to your student? Where you're going to find the material? You as a professor or instructor, you don't have time to, to create such activity. But you know, at least now you know that those resources are, you can find them as, an, as open education resources. And here it's showing you the, the uh, uh, simulation of this, uh, uh, why do we wait less you know, uh, uh, in the elevator? And it gives you all the explanation right here. So. Yes, uh, I, I have to move forward because I have a couple of, you know, uh, yeah, thank time. you very much. But, uh, but that's okay, you know, even though, you know, I'm ready to answer any question later on, uh, uh, Raniero knows, you know, I'm ready. Eh? Now and after, you know, don't worry if we don't, uh, if you have uh, each one of those CK12 website uh, and Creative Commons, they need the training, they need, you know, like uh, capacity building for, you know, so you can make very good use of them. But at least now you know that they exist. Okay, this is chemistry simulation. For example, you want you know, to do some chemistry simulation about, you know, uh, uh, you're talking about, for example, uh, uh, state of matters, for example, and students don't understand. This is a, a, a simulation. Okay, and if you look at it here, it, it shows you the simulation of state of the matter, you know, like beautiful, you know, all and as I said, all those activities, simulation books that you find on CK12, you can customize it the way you want, you can translate it to any language you want. The only thing you need to, if you go to the website of the, let me close this one. If you go to the website of the, uh, to CK12, let me show you what you'll see on the website. Remember when we talk about the licenses, uh, uh, where to find, if you go down, 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 down here, down here, down here at the bottom of the website, look at the bottom right here at the bottom, CC by non-commercial. Take it, do whatever you want to do with it, but don't make money out of it. Okay, and don't uh, take the simulation or this video or whatever and sell it to your student. Okay, ah, one thing here that 
uh, they have a lot of webinars. If you want to learn about a topic or they have a lot of webinars, recorded webinars, you can click on it and you can, for example, understand more about CK12, okay? Let's move on. Uh, let's move on. All right, this is CK12. Moving on, this is Skills Common. Another important website is Skills Common. And here I'm, I'm, I wanna show you how government are involved in this open education movement. You know what this, have you heard about the Skills Common website? And this is, I think, also for uh, forcibly displaced people, for immigrants. It's a very important website and I'll tell you why. This uh, website was created almost 700 institutions and colleges in the United States work on this website to create content. And the money and the funding for this project was 1.9 billion US dollar. And it was donated by the uh, uh, US government. And the reason why they wanted to create content which are openly licensed for the skilled workers. And if you go to this website, think about any profession, think about anything you want, you find material for this specific profession. And if you go to Skills Common, website and you're looking for for example i'm trying to find um, a, a syllabus for let's say uh, i want to teach or i want to create something in italy for the displaced people about the plumbing how to do you know i want to teach them this profession uh, about you know how to do uh, work with electricity uh, i want to uh, the woman I'm, I'm trying to create for them a a, a, a a course or I'm trying to find for them a program about nursing because we want to enroll them. Anything you think about uh, related to workforce and working, uh, you know, you can find it in under She is Skills Common, all right? Skills Common, it's a very uh, important website. And the thing is about Skills Common here, you know, they have 1,323,000 syllabus, they have 1 million presentation, they have 1 million assignment, they have assessment tool, they have uh, 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 different hybrid blended courses. All the material is down here and all this material is open and free, but not share alike. The thing, if you look down, down, down at the left, please look at the screen a little bit. Follow my, it's CC BY. Did you see the CC BY down there? At the bottom, bottom? It's, yes, you can see it here. CC BY, except where otherwise noted the work of them, this are licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution license. Yeah, and it's, it's just the most open license on this website. Again, this Skills Commons website, what they have done, if you want to, for example, uh, in your project, you know, that you're working on the race, that you want to make it part of, uh, for example, whatever website you have in the future, and you have, uh, you can integrate part of this material into your uh, website so that people can access it. Uh, again, uh, uh, today's meeting is just, you know, I'm giving you an idea. Now to go into details of each one of those, it needs maybe, uh, each one of those need two, three, four hours, you know, at least to, to have a feel about what we're, but at least now you know what we're talking about, okay? Let me move on. This is what we call the uh, Skills Common uh, uh, website. If we move on to uh, Merlot, Merlot is another very important uh, uh, place to look for uh, content, for objects, for uh, uh, courses, for resources, and also it is curated and you can access it and do the search and filter the search the way you want. Okay, so Go to Merlot. If we go to Merlot, let me show you how. Let's say you're looking for, this is another digital repository. For example, here, uh, um, you can search, they have the advanced search. For example, you're looking for, let's say I'm looking for something about refugee. And what it will do, it will, for example, you, you're looking for material about healthcare, okay? Uh, this is a, maybe a go to the material and also this is a peer-reviewed database yani the material which you see on Merlot 
okay it is all peer reviewed you see the the stars down here the review for each one let's go to this one and it gives you it's an online course for example let's go to the material and i'm gonna say okay this is refugee this is uh, a course look at this cc, CC by non-commercial shell alike material this is the syllabus of this course for example, lecture, refugee and disaster definition, information, health need of refugees, assessing health. It's a course. You can take the course, you can follow it. All you have to do is abide by the uh, open license and you're okay. You have no problem. Okay. So this is uh, another uh, uh, website, which is important for you to know about, which is the Merlot website. Another website, if you're looking for a, a book, just complete book. Uh, uh, OpenStax is one of the best uh, websites, which is also managed by top universities, where you can find complete books, where you can find complete books to replace the traditional books in universities or in school or whatever. And here they have the best books available by, let's say you're looking uh, and now they, it's very advanced now. They're creating content for teacher, PowerPoint presentation. They're creating assessment. Let's, let's say I'm looking for uh, uh, something for high school. Let's say I want, I'm looking for biology course. Okay, this is the biology course. You can, this is the table of content. I reviewed it. I like it. It has chapter one, two, three. It's a complete book, complete book. CC BY show the license, it's CC BY, it's an open license. What you want to do, you can download it as PDF, okay? You can download it if you have, because they have an app on the mobile, you know, you can, student can download it for free on their app. If this is a book you want to use, you can download it to Kindle devices and so on and so forth. So this is a, a complete book about biology, uh, uh, if you go to one of the chapters, well done, very professional, chapter outline, all the materials, okay? Uh, they have all the attribution by chapter so that if you take part of the chapter, remix it, you know what kind of license it's maybe on this specific chapter. Very well done. This is another website. I advise you to go if you're looking for uh, uh, open textbook. Moving on. LibriVox. LibriVox, it is a website where, you know, uh, there are thousands and thousands of free and open books in all languages. And if you go to LibriVox here and you're trying to find a book that, you know, people have disabilities or so, and you want them, uh, uh, somebody to read, okay, they cannot see too much, but they want to listen to a story. So you can go to LibriVox. It's a free public domain audiobooks. All the books here, uh, all the books here are uh, in the public domain, okay? So if you go to LibriVox, I don't know. Let me just try to go to LibriVox to show you what. And they have books in Arabic, they have in Italian, they have in Spanish, they have all type of book, which, you know, uh, and who's reading the books? The community, you know, people, volunteers. Uh, you, you can, for example, say, I want to be part of this community and you send uh, a request and then you can be part of this uh, community. You see the volunteer thing here, down here. And this is the, their catalog. Okay. And here they have, uh, you can search by language, German, Italian, let's say Italian. I'm looking for a book in Italian. Uh, Alla Luna, let's say this one, you can download it. And uh, I don't know, you can listen to it here. Slum Pumper Likis by C. Louis Leipold. Read in Afrikaans for LibriVox.org by Jerry Retief. 1st September 2008, Durban, South Africa. Slum Pumper Likis by C. Louis Leipold. Okay, let's let's take uh, the first chapter. Nian Nu Jiao Chi Bi Huai Gu. Zhuo Zhe Su Shi. Lang Du Yu Yan. 
this is uh, oh, in different languages, huh? And you, know, you, you can you can take a look at it. And all the material here is uh, open. It's in the public domain here. Look at the at the license down here. It's in the public domain, huh? So this is another example of open education uh, 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 resources. BC Campus. Also, this is a website where you can find different type of collection. They have a lot of, they're very good. The BC campus, it's in Canada, and they have a lot of uh, material for open textbook. They have uh, uh, tools uh, to create uh, uh, open books. They have uh, all type of uh, resources you can find on the uh, BC campus. MIT open course where we've uh, talked about. We have here uh, an example uh, later on, you can look at it, you know, you just click on the link and I will send the, all the material to Raniero, you know, so he will share it with uh, my PowerPoint. You can share it with whoever you want, uh, no problem. This is the open access directory, open data. You remember we talk about open data. This is an example. If you click on it, you can find all different type of data from the World Bank. Of course, you know, it will have open science, the, PLOS uh, website where you can find all type of uh, uh, data and uh, uh, research paper uh, that is under the topic of uh, science. Uh, this Moonline project, maybe you've heard about the Moonline project. Yes, uh, Louisa, you've heard about the Moonline? Yeah. Okay. So this is an example also about uh, 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 Moonlight, which uh, which is a MOOC for refugees and migrants to build their language competencies. And the last thing here is thank you. I'm going to open the floor uh, for any questions or any, uh, yeah, we'll give 10, 15 minutes for the question. Fauzi, uh, I would like to congratulate again for, for, the, the, um, for the course. I have bookmarked most of the websites that you have uh, shown us. <laughs> Uh, because, but uh, of course, as you said, uh, we need we need a lot of time to study uh, the contents. Uh, so Kefaya is asking a question, but I will take advantage of my role as project manager to ask my question first. Okay, fine. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> and my question and my question is the following, Fauzi. I am uh, uh, often called to teach some courses on European projects at the university, in, in a, a university here in Rome. And of course they pay me to deliver the course, not very much, but they pay me, okay? Okay. Is that considered uh, commercial use? Like if I, if I download a book from one of the sites that you no. have shown us no. about my topic, can I give it to the students? Is that considered commercial use or not? Because I'm paid to, to deliver the course. No, this is the yeah, this is the question. No, you're 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 not uh, you're not selling the book yourself. You know, your students are downloading the book, and you're not making money out of this resource. Okay, uh, you making money. It's or fair pay, use. It's uh, no, it's not fair use. It is not fair use no? because fair use it's very complicated. Fair use it means it is the material is copyrighted. And you are taking part of it and showing it to your student. Can I uh, can I have uh, three minutes to show you what I have done at my university? How I introduce? I will show you a small video, three hour, and you can listen. I want you to see, listen very well to uh, the different stakeholder at my university, and I want you to listen to the voices of the student and also. Uh, 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 this video will talk, talks about access, uh, about satisfaction, about the student, what they said about open movement at, uh, that I am uh, leveraging at MDU. And by the way, uh, I'm working at my institution, but also I'm uh, uh, spreading the concept of openness at the national level in Lebanon, because it can be very useful to everybody, for high school students, for university professor, and do a lot of... Uh, so please let me just and uh, 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 let me play this video and let me know if uh, if you can hear the sound because I think I shared the. Open education resources, al mawarid ta'limiya al maftuha, are teaching and learning materials that you may freely and openly use and reuse without charge. 
with the launch of the UNESCO OER Chair for Lebanon and the MENA region. NDU joins the ranks of fewer than 10 other institutions worldwide with similarly appointed chairs. The Faculty of Humanities embraced the university initiative in 2014 to bring OER on campus in order to use it for innovation and research. The great thing about using OER in the classroom over the years, I've noticed that students have not only generated their own content along with the content that I have included, but they've been able to download things from the internet and they interact with students in other parts of the world. As of spring 2020, 17 courses across six departments have made use of the open education resources. OER was very helpful and uh, very interactive. We used it in sophomore rhetoric. Uh, we could uh, easily find topics to debate on. We could easily uh, find articles, find videos. Uh, and uh, it was a good experience not using a book because you can always forget your book, but you can never forget your cell phone. You can never forget your laptop. You can easily just access them and uh, find whatever you want online. The libraries are providing support for the OER initiatives at NDU by including OER resources in our multi-search so when users search for library resources they also find OER resources by educating users about Creative Commons. The advantages of open educational resources clearly outweigh the disadvantages whereas there's a lot of discussion about reducing student costs by providing access to digital material that is openly licensed and avoiding the high costs of printed traditional textbooks Students also encounter access to high quality material that is openly licensed and thus avoid copyright infringement. In addition, students are able to benefit from the latest knowledge in their field. It is a much more dynamic environment and overall it's much more fun to learn with OER. Using OER material in the sophomore rhetoric and discourse analysis courses has proven to have several advantages for both instructors and students. For instance, in the sophomore rhetoric course, uh, choosing material that is up to date, uh, material that has been used by other instructors in universities abroad that can be modified according to my students' needs has proven to be more interesting to the students and made them more interactive in class. Over 7,000 students have benefited from the OER initiative at NDU. Using OER was very enjoyable. It was the first time I uh, hear of OER. We used it in this course analysis at NDU. It is uh, more updated than a book. We could easily share uh, photos, uh, videos, and articles uh, and use the media to our benefit without paying the price of a book. This initiative has saved our students $450,000 on university books so far. Could you hear? Could you hear it uh, very well? Perfectly. Yes. Yes. So this is, you know, if if you if you listen better to better than you, better than your voice. Ah, better than my voice. Ah, good. Uh, what I'm trying, you know, I showed this uh, uh, video for one reason, so that you will uh, hear the voices of different uh, uh, stakeholders, from student voices. Uh, some professor, you know, one with the head talk about, you know, how he's using AR and making open pedagogy, how he's making his students also create content and try to find the content, you know, uh, uh, in his courses. Uh, some, uh, 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 Rainier, a lot of, lot of saving huh? uh, for students, they're so happy, but it's not more, it's more than just access uh, uh, costing, it's about access, about day one, uh, equity, we're talking about equity, a lot of, you are a professor, I am a professor, we know that, you know, we are in the middle of the semester maybe, and there are some students in our class, they don't have, they cannot afford to buy the book, a book in biology or class. So using OER, using open textbook, a student, all students in one, in any class, they have access to the same book from the first day of classes. Uh, we, we face a lot of problems, for example. Uh, uh, you tell your student, I'm going to be using this version or edition. He goes to the bookstore and he come back and say, sir, I, I, I couldn't find this edition. Uh, and then the bookstore say, well, we need two, three weeks to, to order it. We don't have it now. Okay, so uh, uh, if you find maybe an ordered version, so the material maybe is not up to date. So it has a lot of advantages besides just the cost of the book, you know. Uh, we're talking about access, we're talking about, you see the student, they enjoyed it a lot. 
uh, not buying the book, they enjoyed the material, uh, but people, the thing is, we need to make people aware of OER. You know, the material, the content, uh, as I said in the yesterday session, there are more than 1.6 billion work and resources on the internet which are under open license. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, what worries me is that this more or less half a million dollars savings for the students is half a million dollars lost by the publishers. Aren't, aren't publishers objecting to that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah, we're talking here about this is a good uh, thing, that's true, and that's why uh, the open movement, uh, fine, what, what happens is the, uh, the publisher have changed their business model. So what they have done is, well, they're saying, well, if you take the CK12, CK12, the one I told you, the best, the best uh, uh, professor in the United States are writing those books and materials. The best designer are doing those, those simulation, okay? So the publisher, yeah, they're not happy with this movement, of course not, but they had to change their model. What they have done is they're saying, well, okay, this book, which is biology, we have it as textbook, $100, but we can sell it to the university as a cartridge. You can put it on your Moodle or uh, on Blackboard and you pay $30. And this is something good for sure. But the, the problem with that, you know what, Raniero? The problem with that is that for you have this access code, which you pay $30 for it for one semester or for one year. After this, you don't have access to the content. Well, if you adopt as a professor and me as a professor, adopt an open uh, textbook, this textbook will stay with you forever with our student, even he graduate or whatever. Right. So of course, they are not happy uh, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the open movement, but they are trying to change uh, uh, and play around, uh, you know, they made a lot of money now, a lot of money. Now it is, we have our society uh, that we need to take care of. <clears throat> I'm happy for them. So now Kefaya was, was going to ask a question. Yeah, Kefaya, please. Yes, uh, my question is, uh, I don't know if it is for you, Mr. Fauzi, or not, but if we need more information about this website, uh, to whom about, we have to... About what? This uh, website, the one that you uh, explained for us, the... The one, CK12? CK1 and the other uh, website. No, if we just, need more information, you so... Can, uh, can... You can just uh, go to the website, look at it. What do you mean more information? Allah, if you want... Yeah, and how to use it, uh, ah, how we can... Allah, so maybe... Want, uh, Kifaya, the thing yes. is, there are two ways. I understood, you know. Either, you know, you just... Uh, uh, you go to the website and try to learn. There are videos and stuff. They are help files, you know, if you want to use the material. Because uh, uh, CK12, OER Commons, you know, you need to be trained on, uh, you know, or if you are in university or in, I don't know where you're going to use it. I am, uh, I am a certified uh, trainer, so I maybe I need this uh, kind of website in my trainer. Ah, okay. Okay, you're a trainer. Maybe, you know, you can, for example, CK12, if you go down to, at the bottom of the page, there are a lot of webinars which they have done before on each. They have maybe 50 webinars on each of the topics they have on their website. So you can start by listening to the webinar, for example. Okay, okay. one by one. And if you need anything, drop me an email. I'll be more than happy to, to offer any help if, if you need my help. Thank uh, you thing, very much. The, the thing I need, uh, Kefaya, is we need to... Uh, 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 advocate for open uh, movement. The openness thing is good for everybody. It's good for yeah. the norm. For us, it's not. It's good for the forcibly displaced people. It's not. Uh, it's, it's good for our students. It's good for the whole community. Okay, so we need to be advocate for uh, openness, and I'm ready to help in any way I can. If you need me, uh, uh, I'll be glad. Nice. And if you need, uh, if you need my uh, expertise, you know, just to give an awareness campaign about the openness for I don't know with whom you work in Jordan, in Arabic, English, I'll be ready to do it. You know, uh, don't worry, yes. but you uh, know, keep yes, the good work you. going. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Fauzi. Okay. Um, it's uh, Luisa's turn. Luisa had a question as well. Luisa. Yes, I have a last question. I have a last question on. Uh... Um, uh, reliability assurance. 
So we went through some examples, as you said, of some sectorial um, platforms for open educational resources. And only once um, came the word from your side of peer review. So I was wondering uh, how the, the quality assurance process works, especially if we think of uh, uh, open research resources. I mean, we say adapt, remix, republish. Um, but if the platform has no moderator, if there is no peer review process embedded, how how do we ensure that we are getting new resources that are of quality and that uh, provide reliable data? Because if I can open a resource, change it, I could write whatever. Right. Who has let, to check? Uh, let me let me uh, let me tell you, Luisa. You know uh, the, the same concept of Wikipedia. Uh, the, the same concept of, we, uh, you know, the publisher, whenever they write a book, they bring three, four author and they pay them money and they write the book and they have a committee just to review for quality. While here with the OER Commons, you have hundreds of people are reviewing your resources on OER Commons. There is an institution on top of this. Uh, if you take open uh, the Merlot, the, go and check who, you know, who are the team of Merlot, the best university, Rice University, all, all those three uh, the thing is, for example, you know, myself, you know, if you take, for example, when you travel, booking.com. When, when I travel, I, I, I okay, booking.com show, show me a nice picture on their website and stuff. But what I do, usually I go to the ratings and the reviews of the people and see what they are saying about this hotel or about this uh, whatever. Same thing is happening here on on OER Commons. You know, this is the community. It's not just one, two, three, four, five person who are evaluating the resource. Hundreds of people are putting their feedback on a resource, and that's why you see the stars, three star, four star, following a certain criteria. And I didn't have time, but on create on OER Commons, there is a rubric. If, for example, you found an Italian uh, Italian res uh, resource in uh, Italian. You can go and you say, for example, they ask for interactivity, you can say one uh, star or five star on it. So this is the community. It is evaluated by the community. Uh, for example, open stacks, the open books, it is by top universities in US that they are managing this website. Okay, like same as uh, edX Coursera for MOOC. It's, they are big university, big names behind those uh, uh, MOOCs, right? So this is a story. And, Yes, you are right. There are a lot of uh, resources which are of low quality. But after all, Wiza, if I am a professor teaching mathematics, I am the subject expert in mathematics. It means what? It means the same thing. Whenever I decide which book I want to use per year or per semester, I take from the publisher one, two, three, four books. I look as a subject expert and evaluate and decide which book to use. This is what we do, right, uh, Raniero? Usually we are the instructor, we evaluate. And also whenever you're looking for a resource as a subject matter expert in chemistry, in biology, in whatever topic, you are the subject matter expert. You can look at the resource and you can decide if this resource is of quality, yes or no, on top of what the community is saying about this resource. This is my answer. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, if there are no other burning questions, uh, uh, we are perfectly on time. Uh, I would like to thank uh, you very much, uh, Fauzi, for this extensive presentation. All charming. Uh, sure. I would like to ask uh, to thank also those who have participated. Unfortunately, it was not. Uh, very, very wide audience, but as I said, the, the important is the quality and not the quantity. <laughs> and and what I what I what I'm really uh, happy about is that we managed to uh, to record this this session, so we will make it available uh, under a buy uh, license, as you yeah, said. Uh, buy share alike. Buy share alike. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's better so people can. Uh, uh, 
uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed and hopefully we'll see you on Monday. Uh, Monday is going to be a little bit different because we're going to talk about uh, uh, some uh, tools and apps and uh, some, you know, where you can use this and uh, as you, you know, as we agreed on. So we'll see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend and it's always good to see you virtually and hope one day we will meet face to face. We hope so, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. It was great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you, Kefaya. Thank you, everyone.